Hey guys, welcome back. A brand new build series and back by popular demand at number 30 second scale kit. And this week it's going to be this guy, the AV-8B Night Attack Carrier 2 by Trumpeter. Beautiful kit, pretty much out the box on this one. Two things though, with that big bubble canopy, you can see a lot inside. So I've got our Ares resin cockpit. So this week we'll talk about how to get in that in there and shoehorning it and getting that detailed up. And also you see quite from the white deck cord. Instead of using a decal or painting it, I've got a flying Levinex the, um, vinyl the kind of decal to go on there. So we'll do that. Um, you say pretty much out of the box, should be a great kit, not too big. Um, being a Harry is pretty compact, even though it's 32nd scale, so it should be a really nice size to work on. And we'll be going with the scheme right there, with the black tail, that guy. All right, cool. So let me put this down, let me switch the camera back, and let's go ahead and get started on this cockpit. Hey up guys, welcome back to part number one of a brand new build series and it's going to be by popular demand another 30 second scale kit. So it's going to be Trumpeter's 30 second scale Harrier AV-8B Night Attack 2. So it's a newer version with the glass cockpit basically, kind of like the GR7, GR9 RAF version. Um, so we're going to build this pretty much out of the box for now. Um, one thing we're definitely going to do is because it has that big canopy. We're going to throw in a resin, Aries resin cockpit set, and this is going to be. Uh, I don't see a number on this one. Two one two one is a number for this one, um, which obviously goes with this kit. So the Night Attack Two version cockpit. So again, you can see inside it. So we do a resin cockpit. It's a little bit surgery required, and if you can see there, pretty prominent it has a white deck cord. So we've got a line Levinex vinyl version to stick on there, make it a little easier of having to paint it or go for a decal. So that's all we're gonna do for now. Um, I know the wheel wells aren't that greatly detailed. Um, you can get resin for those too, but for me, you're not gonna see it because underneath it, and it's gonna be on the, the base. So it's a waste of time and money for me. Plus if you put the um, resin wheel base in there, I know it kind of interferes with the cockpit. So it's kind of hard to do both. So I don't want to cause too many issues for myself. So I'm gonna head and just do the, um, the cockpit because that's more important for me, I think. Um, the ordinance is pretty crude on this one, so we'll see how we go along. It, it builds up really nice, and I get you know, kind of kind of feeling it when I get there. We might get some resin um, weapons too, but we'll see when we get to that part. Um, but it's going to be quite a big build. Um, 30 second scale. I've done a review of this kit, so you can check out my channel. Um, I will be doing the markings for this guy, which is... I'm um, trying to see, it doesn't say which squadron it is, but it's um, basically I'm going with one black tail right here. I kind of like, rather than just doing plain grey, I'll do one with black tail, so this guy's the, fit, the kind of scheme we're going with. So we're going with that, um, I say pretty much out the box. Going through a box here, it's not going to be huge because it's Harris, not a big aircraft, but that's kind of rear end the fuselage. And then put the front on, something like that. Like that, that's kind of the size you're looking at. So it's not massive. And then I right, go find the wings. Oops, it's not of the bag here. So that's the um, the wing cross section. So it's not going to be huge at all. It's going to be a decent size, but not super huge for 30 second scale, like a planker or something. It's going to be pretty manageable, I think. But 30 second scales gives us that room down some detail and kind of really kind of weather it up nicely and do a nice job. So I'm going to get rid of these bags, I don't need those anymore. Um, so that's really it. Um, box full of plastic. This kit isn't too badly priced. I think it's like $70, $80 for a 30 second scale kit. It's not too bad. Um, my first ever video build on this channel over a year ago now was the 30 second scale Trumpeter MiG-29 SMT. And that went together beautifully. That's Tamiya quality, amazing kit. So fingers crossed this one will go together okay for us too. Obviously adding a resin cockpit, add a few little complications for us and stuff as well, but we'll get through that. So that's pretty much it for now um, as an introduction. Today, Ross, as always, we're gonna start with the cockpit and make sure we do some dry fitting and make sure we get inside the, um, okay, get inside the front here without too many issues. So um, I guess let me turn the camera down and let's kind of start talking about this resin cockpit and then how we'll go about kind of getting that kind of build up and painted and weathered and um, installed the front end of the fuselage right here. Okay, so let's get started with the beautiful Aries cockpit. So 
kind of going through a little bit here, you can see how nice and detailed this tub is. With an aircraft like the Harrier, with a, that big canopy, it's nice to kind of add that detail because you definitely see inside this. So, nice little upgrade. So, that's that piece. You got a couple of um, side walls. You got a seat. Stick control stick and a few little parts. It's like the inside of the canopy frame. Uh, not sure exactly what that is. And a couple of little bits, maybe projection seat stuff. And you've also got instrument cluster and some photo etch. And my nemesis, a photo etch HUD. I absolutely hate photo etch HUDs. I don't think I've ever in my life got one right without falling apart. But fingers crossed for this one. So that's, we get the kit. Oh, and also, also you get the, um, this part, which I've already cut from the block here. So here's like the instrument panel looking really nice. Again, nicely detailed. Um, I could cut the front bit off. It's a little bit ambiguous where you cut it, but I just cut and sanded it off around the, the casting block, and I think I've pretty much got what I need to get off. Um, so, my little health and safety kind of disclaimer, whenever you use resin, um, you cut resin, also dust is not good for your lungs, so I always wear a mask, and uh, I always wet sand and have like a bit of wet paper towel down, and as soon as I'm done, I wipe away those dust particles, because this stuff isn't good for you. So, I did that. Um, kind of cut that off already, just so I want to see kind of fit and what's going on here. And I, to be honest with you, I kind of want to get rid of the surgery first to make sure this thing fits. And then if I screw it up, then I don't got too much work into this. So here are the two sides for the front. You can see there and there. I've cut this bit out. And I've still got to cut this little bit out. So this bit here basically gets replaced with this. So what, say so I cut it out, just used my um, organ harvesting saws. Good old zona saws. So that one, I have a more smaller one. So I kind of, you know, left, as always, leave yourself a couple of mils, um, wiggle room, then just sand it back to where I need it. Um, so I cut that bit out, on, obviously on this side, and sand it off, no problem at all. So I just need to do this side. So let me do that. And then I want to kind of test fit all this and see how it kind of fits. Um, I'm not sure this front bit needs a little bit more sanding or not, but we'll see um, how it goes. But basically that's going to sit in like that kind of, I guess. So cool. So let me go away, let me get this cut out and do a little bit of dry fitting and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so we're not too bad. We've got a little bit of a gap here taped up, but you know what? If you squeeze it together, you can glue it. There's going to be no gap, so I think we're good. The back's okay. This guy fits okay. Coplet's in okay. Sidewalls aren't in obviously, but overall pretty good. I've put that wheel bit bay in there too, just to make sure it all fits. And it does. Um, obviously that's not quite together, but overall not too bad. Um, not a ton of stuff, so let me kind of show you what I did here. I'll open it back up. Take that out. So I just put those these wheel bays in just to make sure that, you know, all the stuff fits and stuff, which it does. Um, so all I had to do, this side was fine, nothing to take care of here. Just those two pins here I had to sand off. Actually, sand this a little bit more. So these two pins here, um, and that's pretty much it, really. And there's a little ejection pin mark there I took. But um, I did take the bottom off, most of the bottom off the, the block too. I didn't think I needed to do it, but I did just in case. And I think I just needed just to kind of get it in. So I think it doesn't necessarily get that block off the bottom. Um, but basically, it just sits like that. Yeah, a little bit of epoxy resin and stuff, and you'd be good to go. So um, yeah, I think we try it one more time here with no. We'll be in see the gap. So the back's done. And there you go. So I think it's gonna fit pretty nicely. So not too much hassle so far. It fits nicely on the back there. Again, once it's all glued together, epoxied in and stuff, it's gonna look pretty good, I think. So cool. So I'm glad that kind of fits. Um, like I say, I always like to do that surgery first in the kit, <laughs> get it out of the way, um, and then kind of um, yeah, do a little dry fitting, make sure this stuff all fits, because with these Aries pits, you never quite know what the deal is. But, um, all right, so we're looking good. So next up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the side walls taken off, um, the block, and I'm also take the seat off at the same time. Um, then once it's all off, we can then think about, um, you know, starting priming and painting this stuff up, which is gonna look really cool. So let me go ahead and get the blocks off these pieces too. So I just want to go quickly, before I put this stuff in, give it a quick bath, I just want to quickly show you the difference of the cockpit um, instrument panel. So 
that's, that's kit one, and this is the resin one. You can see how, hopefully, you see the difference there of um, the light. How much better this one actually really is. Um, the cupboard one's not too bad, it's just the resin. The whole tub itself is just way more detailed. Um, has side walls are okay and stuff, but again, the kit one's just a little bit better. So, anyway, so all the stuff now I'm gonna put in a bath of um, this is lukewarm water with a little bit of dish soap. Um, so, two, two reasons I gotta throw it all in. Firstly, you get all the resin, get rid of all the mold release agent, all that kind of stuff, and clean it. And secondly, it's all the resin dust from where I cut the stuff off. So, get that off too. So, I'm just gonna throw it all in the bath. And the key with this is too, when you dump the water out, make sure you don't throw the little pieces down the sink. That's happened before too, so. Just give them a little bath, um, let soak for a little bit, then um, five minutes or so, I'll, I'll run them off with some water, and then just let them air dry for a couple of hours, and then we can kind of carry on working with those. So, in the meantime, I've got this resin dust still on my desk, and get, get cleared away while this kind of has a little bath, and um, we'll get ready for the next part. Okay, so we're back. So, we've um, primed everything, the black, Oh, dropped it, missed the surface of 1500 black. So we did that um, and hit the center of the cushions here with some white, just kind of break it up some pre-shading. Um, the seat I think is black. Now the finish looks a little bit different than all, it's very shiny, I'm not sure what happened. Um, it's, I think maybe I messed up and used like airbrush cleaner to thin it or something, instead of lacquer thinner or something crazy like that. So I might need to go over that one more time and just kind of see how, see what I did there. I'm not sure what, what happened, but anyway, so seat's done, carpet tub, same thing, painted black, and then I came back with my pre-shading with my dead white 7207. And just kind of broke it up to create shadows. So when I come back up, create some pre-shading in there. Um, cool. Also painted these guys um, with the same primer, the Sosa Black. And um, the instruments right here, the dials, as I mentioned, I painted the back, back of the plastic here, it's synth plastic, painted it white, the same white we used, same white, so um, you can actually see you know, the instruments pop through um, now. Just put a little masking tape on the front, just not only to protect it, but just so I remember to spray the right side. I don't spray the front because that will obliterate all my detail, obviously. So it's pretty important you do spray the back back of the um, the plastic on the dials. Um, cool. So thing thing to note now is um, I did some reference pictures, and actual the instruments themselves and the switch panels and stuff down the side um, aren't actually black. They're more of a very dark gray color. So I looked, it's either going to be NATO black or German gray. I think I'm going with German gray. Um, it just looks, um, how it's on the pictures with sunlight and the fading and stuff, I think that's a little bit more accurate. Plus when I add washes and stuff, it's going to look brighter. Uh, sorry, look darker. So I think I'm going to go with German gray for the um, instruments and stuff. Um, and then on the front here, the instrument panel will be German gray. And then all the dials, sorry, the instrument panel itself is going to be the copy color which is dark gold gray and then all the, the buttons and the, um, the switch panels and stuff we painted in a German gray which is a darker color um, so I'm going to go ahead and paint dark gold gray MRP 100 or you can use XF 53 or 54 if you have Tamiya paints I just like the MRP paints so I'm going to paint the whole tub and the side panels here and then we'll come back with we'll mask and we'll paint these um, the switches down the side and the front here we'll paint with the um, German gray before we kind of pick out all the switches and the um, buttons and stuff. So that seems where we're at. So let me go ahead and get all this stuff painted and I'll be right back. Okay, so making a lot of progress as you can see here. So almost done to be honest with you. So this is the main tub looking really good. And we got the seat. And the side panels. So let me talk about what I did here. So we did go German grey for the panels went with NATO, I went with NATO black instead it was a little bit darker and better I think so NATO black um, it's nice and raised so I could really hand paint those no problem so I didn't need to airbrush it and then um, so I did that and then picked out the buttons with my usual Posca pens which I love these white but white pretty much and then the odd one detail in yellow and the key with these are make sure you get the PC1MR because these are the fine tip if you get the PC1 M, I think it is, it's like really big like felt tip. So you want the fine tip, which is the um, the one MR, which is key to these. So really, it's real simple to be honest with you. Um, just dot, 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 pick out all the raised detail, almost like dry brushing. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, screens, as always, use my clear green. And um, obviously we put in the dials there too, the photo etch. And for any glass, I always use now this Mod Podge Super Gloss Brilliant Extreme, just for 
toothpick and just dab it in, dab it in, and then on the screens, and it just gives that really kind of glossy kind of glass finish, which looks really cool. See the light there. Um, that's done. Um, Say so the switches were done. Same thing with the um, the white Posca pen, picked out, looking pretty good. Um, and then just gave it every, all the tub a quick wash of um, brown Citadel and the um, Agraf uh, shade, which is brown. So I gave the tub and the side panels the brown, no problem at all. Um, the hut top, the clear green, and again a lot of this Mod Podge stuff on top to give it real shiny. And the seat, kept the black Mr. Servicer, uh, picked out the details of the Posca pen he had on black. Um, green for the belts and then just various colors for, and for the um, seat cushion. Then I added the um, Agrafa shade again for the wash to pick out the details. And looking real good. So we're getting there. Um, I think almost finished on this. I just want to, you're not going to see much in the back here. I just want to find some pictures make sure it is all the same color. There might be a little bit um, top, top hand painting in the back here but I'll check that out. So what we'll do then is we'll get all this put together um, and we're ready for install it into the cockpit. Okay so as you see we're done. All together, so went in not much problems. That sounded a little bit off the front uh, on the corners there. And I, st I put it all together. I had like a maybe a two or three mil gap at the front, but if I kind of push it together and glued it, it would would kind of still fit. Um, but so I glued it all around it. This bit was a nightmare because there's not really that much attachment point. There's just that little what, three or four mil right there um, to add the glue. So whenever I had hold it real tight, nothing was really sticking. Um, even super glue with kicker wasn't working, and I happened to find um, some of this lying around, some Gorilla super glue gel, and actually worked. That actually worked. So I put a healthy dose of it on, and then just sanded it back. Um, I still might need a little bit of filler and stuff just to fix this little area, but sanded it back. Um, got that guy in, and um, we're looking good. And there's a cockpit. Okay, you guys see inside. Um, still got a couple of little dials that go on the edge. Um, one here, one here, a little photo etch, but I'm going to put a canopy on first, I think, and then do this afterwards um, when that time comes. But there you go, you can see straight down. So, really happy how it turned out. Um, it's got, yeah, took care of these. I've got a little bit of rescribing to do, because they sat sand back um, here, get rid of some seams, got a little bit of rescribing to do, and um, there's a little bit of filling just inside the fit right here. See where the, the wheel front, the nose gear bay is? that side and that side's a little bit worse so we just need a filling there but I think maybe just because adding the resin um, the Aries cockpit probably made um, you know put a slight tolerances out slightly so that's probably why you have a little bit of a gap but yeah overall looking really good glad how it turned out um, looking very nice indeed um, and did mention too is the back I did paint the back there um, I finally found, finally found a picture online there's not many pictures of these things but that these were painted kind of like a black color and so I painted those in the back a little detail um, but yeah, again, this cockpit, big, huge, round bubble canopy. So it's you know, I, I'm glad I kind of splurged got the airy set on this one because um, you definitely will see this. Uh, I'm still gonna add the HUD, obviously. Um, I always, always break those or damage them. So um, I'll wait to and get take take a prescribe and get this all done, and then just before I put a canopy on, I'll put the HUD on, and then put a canopy front front canopy on, um, part of the canopy on over that. But yeah, looking really good. Um, so it wasn't too bad at all. And again, really like detail there. Hold it back a little bit, you can probably see it a little bit better. See? There we go. Um, and it, we're looking at it, looks like it's skewed, skew, but that, that lower, the right screen is lower than the top one, it's just a different place on the um, instrument panel there. But cool. That, well, that's going to round up this episode, so, you know, putting the Aries, bay, Aries cockpit in there. Um, wasn't a little bit of surgery required, but it wasn't too bad. I'm um, just taking your time and stuff. And yeah, so we've got this front section pretty much done. Like I said, got to rescribe, got a few little bits and bobs to go on here, and I'll just slot into the main fuse large area. So hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I'll be back next Friday with the next part. So have a great week, guys, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.